Hi everyone, Ken from Miniature War Gaming Warriors and today I am going to show you how I paint my Italians for the Napoleonic era for black powder. Doing these around the 1812 period and this is the 7th line regiment. You can use this as a guide to painting Italians, obviously each regiment was different, you just have to follow their specific painting scheme which I will stick in the show notes below to a website where you can get the others from. But the premise is very very similar. So I am painting a Perry miniature today, absolutely beautiful as you can see. And this model's been primed in grey sear from Citadel, from the rattle can. Gives it a nice smooth edge because I'm going to be using some contrast paints today. So looking forward to that. So while I've got the chance, just going to talk about Monday nights, 8 o'clock UK time, the Plastic Crack Podcast. This is where four YouTubers get together and we just talk about the hobby. If you haven't seen it before, I'll have a link to Series 2 in the show notes below. But it is well worth a listen to. Really, really do enjoy it. It's myself, at Martin Seventh Son, Boots on the Table, Dom and On Point HQ Stee. We just talk about all things hobby. We get special guests on. We've had the Perrys on before. Uh, we're going to be having Warlord Games. We've had, we've had different sculptors. We've also had offensive miniatures. Been really, really fun. And I highly recommend you check it out on a Monday night, 8 o'clock. The first paint I'm going to be using is Black Templar, and that's from Citadel's Contrast range. The reason I'm using this and not a normal matte black is because I want to be able to do these troops really, really quickly and get them on the table. So a conveyor belt system is how I'd be doing it. So while I paint all the black on this model, I then move on to the next model, paint all the black on that, then paint the black on that, and so on and so forth. So you want to make sure you get all the black. It's the boots, the cartridge pouch, and also the bayonet scabbard, and not forgetting the peak of the shell. The next colour I'm going to be using is Wildwood, and again it's from the Citadel Contrast paint range. I find this paint amazing for painting muskets and also rifles for World War II. Don't panic if you get some of it over like the strap or any of the metal parts because we're going to be going over those later with their specific colours. Next colour is probably one of my favourite, it's Darko Flesh and I'm going to be using this over the Gilliman Flesh just for the pure reason it gives you a nice dark recess. The Gilliman Flesh is probably a little bit more on the bright side so I tend to have to tone that down quite a lot. So the Darko just seems to be a better skin tone for me. Next colour is green and for this we're going to be using Warp Lightning. This is a really nice bright green from the Citadel Contrast range. You do want to make sure you try and be a bit neat here so I do take my time a little bit. You want to make sure you get the cuff. The model's starting to take shape now and gathering these brighter colours on the miniature itself, especially for the Italians I find really, really does look really nice and that's why I look quite like the 7th. You can do the 1st Regiment obviously, but I think the 7th for the different colours is really nice. The green and the red really, really go well together. Just a very quick one now, we're going to be using Goblin Green just to do the neat work on the back of the jacket here for the green. Because the contrast is a very, very runny paint, but Goblin Green goes really well. And matching the Warp Lightning, and we're still able to give the jacket some detail on the back there. Also not forgetting to do the outside of the collars in Goblin Green as well. Moving on now, one of the main colours that you're going to be using is Blood Angels Red from the Citadel Contrast range. You've got to make sure to get the jacket. And also, don't forget to do round the collar if you're doing the 7th Regiment. And if you're doing Grenadiers, make sure you get the bloom and the rope on their bare skins as well. Moving on to the next colour, which is Gore Grunter Fur. This is another contrast paint. This is absolutely fantastic for doing backpacks and as well as horses as well if you're into your Napoleonics or your medievals. This is a must-have paint in your collection. So the next colour is for the roll mat. You can use any colour for this. I've chosen Space Wolves Grey. You can use any greys, greens or, or blues or browns. Whatever you want to use, you can use. But I've chosen Space Wolves Grey for in the contrast range. Snake by Leather is the next colour. And I'm going to be doing this for his like canteen on the side. You can paint these in different colours, but I've chosen Snake by Leather. And I'm also doing his hair in that colour as well, just because I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. But again, you can choose any browns or blacks or anything you want to do his hair. 
Moving on to our first metallic paint from the Army Painter. This is gun metal, and this is obviously for all the uh, metal parts on the musket itself, including the bayonet and the barrel. If you do have any cups, now's the time to paint them on your model. So the next part is matte white, and you want to be doing all the cross belts, uh, not forgetting the bayonet strap as well. And you want to be doing the sling on the musket and not forgetting the backpack and the bedroll as well. I do this because I want to see two distinct colours of white. So I want to see the cross belt to have its own colour of white and the uniform to be separate. So when you put a wash over it, they're distinctly different. An optional step now as well, for my Shaco wraps for my Italians, I generally leave them white. I do do mixed colours like grey sometimes, but you've also got the pom-pom. Depending on what you want to do, you can leave that white or you can put a green if you've got Voltigeurs or you can do half green, half white depending on the company level. Okay, it's button time. <laughs> so I paint these with Retributor Armor Gold for all of my buttons. They should be white if you're going for historical accuracy, so you could do a matte white. But I do it as gold, and I also do the lock on the uh, musket gold as well. So now I use a wash dark tone from the Army Painter. I do that with a 50-50 mix, either with water or quick shade mixing medium is what I've used in this video. It literally goes all over the model and I wait for that to dry for a good hour before moving on to the next steps. So now the wash is dry, you could probably agree with me that it looks absolutely fantastic. Really happy with how it's turned out. You could just leave it like this, but we're going to go a few extra steps just to show you what you can do to make your model pop a little bit more. So with this, we're using Barbarian Flesh, and we're just going to do the flesh tones around the face and also on the hands. And once again, we're going to go with matte white and we're just going to go over the cross belts just to make them stand out that little bit more and give them a bit more definition. And if you want to remember, and you can do the same for the uniform, you can go over the matte white with the uniform. I find it takes a long time and I don't bother because I like to have the definition between the two. And the next step is Retributor Armour Gold again from Citadel. This is for the buttons, yeah, just to make them pop out that little bit more. Remembering using matte white if you've gone the historical accurate route for the seventh, you would have done that in the previous step. So everyone, here's the completed miniature. I just want to take this time to say thank you guys very much for watching and supporting the channel. If you haven't already, be sure to share this video with people that may be interested and also like and comment below. It really does go a long way and helps the channel out massively. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for the latest content. I will be doing some more of these videos and I've got a new project coming up which may include some ships, so people may be interested in that as well. Thanks very much for watching guys. This is Ken from Miniature Wargaming Warriors. See you again very soon soon and bye bye for now oh yeah be sure to check out the facebook group and all that lovely stuff as well in the show notes cheers bye bye